Hey guys, welcome again to another Tech Guru video. Today we are in Adobe Photoshop and I will be showing you how to apply a vintage or retro look to your photos. This is a very easy way of doing it. There are obviously numerous ways that you can do this, but I have found this works the best when you're working with a lot of photos and trying to compare and contrast the different effects that you can apply to them. So the first thing you see here is I have a nice old building. Uh, it works best if you have some type of skyline involved. Uh, retro vintage effects look really good with the skyline involved. Uh, it just looks a lot better. And I've applied the effect to this photo here. Uh, so if I go right here you can see the original photo uh, it's a little more dull than the photo that you just saw and I've taken the contrast down as well so if you want to achieve this look right here which is a nice vintage photo look I will show you how to do that by applying a few different layer effects as well as dealing with some of the RGB curves within the photo so the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and grab your image from wherever it may be uh, and load it into Photoshop now the first thing you're going to want to do is convert your image to a smart object. In order to do that you will need to right click or control click on your layer and go to convert to smart object. Click on that now. By doing this, this unlocks your layer as well as allows you to apply the different effects that we're going to need to apply. The next thing that you want to do is go down right here to where it says Lay, uh, create new fill or adjustment layer. Click on the down arrow there and go all the way down until you see curves right here under levels. Click on curves. Once you've done that you will then see the curves adjustment layer panel come up and what we want to do is create an RGB curve okay so we want to hit the down arrow and go to our red okay so once we are in our reds we're gonna do a few adjustments here now one thing you need to understand this up here in the top right hand corner is your highlights. This down below in your bottom left hand corner is your shadows. Now you can play with this to get the achieved effect that you want, but I've learned that this works the best. So you want to go ahead and grab the upper right hand corner, which is your highlights, and go ahead and click and hold and drag that up just a little bit right about there, and then go grab the shadows right down here in the bottom left corner and take that down just about right here. It'll look like a little backwards uh, or a little small S. Next thing you want to do is grab your greens, which is right under the red there, and you want to do the same exact thing. Go ahead and upper right hand corner and move the highlights up a little bit and then take the shadows down just a little bit, just like that. Now once you go to blue, which is the bottom one here, you're going to do the complete opposite. You're going to take your highlights down a little bit, just like that, and then your shadows will be going up just like that right there. Now once we are done with our curves we can go ahead and X out of that and we're no longer going to work with the curves. Now the next few things are just tweaks to kind of add to it a little bit. What we want to do is go down here again to our adjustment layers here and click on that and go to your brightness and contrast which is right there. Click on brightness and contrast. We want to up our brightness to around, I normally take it to about I'd say 30, uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 is uh, is okay so I'm gonna leave mine right at 30 okay and then if you would like you can even take your brightness down just a little bit not much right about there is good now the last thing that I'm going to do is optional I like to do it just because it adds a little darkness to some of the photo is applying a gradient map and in order to do that we're going to go to our adjustment and fill later layers once more and we're going to go down almost all the way to the bottom until you see gradient map click on gradient map now go ahead and click on the down arrow once you are within the gradient map now once you are here you can apply any of these that you like I prefer one specific so what I'll do is click on the little side arrow here go down until you see metals which is right down here in the bottom click on metals it will say replace current gradients with the gradients from metals and then you will click append and then once you do that scroll all the way down to the bottom okay until you see a few of these up here now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply uh, what I call right here it is the light brown gradient it is the white to light brown gradient click on that there and then close out of your gradient panel now go ahead and select your gradient map from the layers panel here make sure it is highlighted and go ahead and change that 
blend mode to soft light by clicking on soft light. Once we do that, the last thing we want to do is take our opacity of that layer almost all the way down. I would say leave it at right around 30%, okay? So take that to around 30%. Once you've done that, you now have achieved this nice vintage look as you see here in this photo. So we've taken a photo that looked like this right here and we've applied a few layer masks and by doing that, it is going to allow us to achieve this nice vintage and retro effect. Now, if you have any questions, guys, feel free to put them in the comment box below. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have about this effect. If you want any more Photoshop tutorials, I'll have a link below on my Photoshop tutorial playlist. And guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button below if this video helped you. And if you would like more info like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It does help me out. And I will see you guys next time.